Hello. Well, some time ago I spoke to you about framing LPs, either damaged old LPs uh, where they're scratched but the sleeves are still interesting historically or whichever. Uh, well, I've, I've framed up many Beatles LPs and uh, this this is one anyway uh, that you'll know this image please please me love me do and other songs the Beatles reissued various times anyway I think that they look great in sleeves like this so I've done several of them uh, I want to show you something that I bought the other day and uh, I intend to frame it's this one. Uh, I had a heads up that this was being sold on Amazon uh, on vinyl for about £6.50, something like that. So although I don't play LPs anymore, I thought I've got to get this. I'd wanted to get the Beano cover album with Clapton on them all sat down there. But um, this this one came, you know, um, to be available just over six quid. Great. Uh, the famous Decker Sleeve, um, the well-known album with Peter Green on, and uh, I thought, I've got to have this. This will look great in a frame. In fact, it's still sealed up. Um, that's the back of it, with notes there from John Mayer, and uh, it says, the personnel of the Bruce Blues Breakers, having changed since our last LP, this album serves as a proper introduction to two new members of the group, Peter Green on lead guitar and Ainsley Dunbar on drums. I think most people realise what a tough time lay ahead uh, in the way of comparison and criticism for any guitarist in this country faced with replacing the acknowledged master of the blues guitar, Eric Clapton, in my band. However, Peter Green took over the job managed to brave out the storm at first he sounded like a clapton copyist but not unnaturally since he was having to play the current repertoire that eric helped make famous and transition to new material had to be gradual within weeks he began to develop his own ideas and the technique to express them until now it is obvious that both peter and eric have separately improved beyond recognition but in totally different directions and it goes on and on and on. This um, this is by John Mayo, 1967 sleeve notes uh, for this Decker LP. Um, John was on Decker uh, for some years. And there we have it. Now, the interesting thing is, I was looking before I started doing this video, I looked at the bottom. I was looking to see um, where it was pressed. Uh, oh, incidentally, produced by Mike Vernon, and recording engineer Gus Dudgeon. Um, it says 1967, and then it says 2015, Decca Music Group, distributed by Di Agostini Publishing, Italia, Spain. Now, I didn't know that they'd repressed any of these albums, so it makes me wonder if there's been a box set of John's knocking about John Mayer, Blues Breakers, John Mayer, uh, in, at his tenure on um, on Decca Records. Now, I know there's a new box set out with the first 10 years, which I've got that box set, actually. Uh, CDs and blah, 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 blah. And I'll be touching all that sometime in the future. Um, but I've got some other videos to make before then. But it's interesting to see that this had been repressed uh, using all the original sort of sleeve and sleeve notes by Diagostini. And I hadn't heard that they were going to do this from anywhere else. Uh, but for about, I think, £6.50 or £6.90, something like that, I think it's a bargain. And it's bound to look great framed up. And uh, as soon as I put it in the frame, I shall be showing it you. Uh, I love John Mayo's music, and um, he has made, you know, certain changes down the years, and they've all been interesting. But 
Uh, I must show you this when this is framed. Let me know if you frame any of your LPs, any of your LP sleeves, um, rather than just sort of turf them out or whichever, or, or have them on the shelf for posterity. They do look great on the wall, though. Okay, thanks for watching. Just hold with hold hold this space. Well, I've taken it out of the packaging, and uh, I've picked out a frame, taken all the wrapping off that, and I've put it in the frame. Sorry about the reflection there. And uh, let's see if I can take the light off that and cut it down a bit. That gives you a bit better an idea. Doesn't it look great? And for a, under seven pounds, absolutely brilliant. And then, of course, the frame, which I already had anyway, but it looks great. May have to reposition it a little bit on the top because you see a little bit of white there. But nonetheless, it looks brill. I've left the LP inside to, um, you know, make it stable and stop slipping about. I'm not, never going to play the LP, am I? I? I've already got all that material. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing this. Let me know if you frame any of your albums. Let me know what you think, uh, good, bad or indifferent. And if, you, if you've enjoyed it, please tick a like. And if you haven't subscribed, good time to subscribe now. Bye for now. Thanks.